ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ Okay, there I hit the button already. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oops. First thing we got to decide is uh although I got quite a bit of stuff for the free channel. So if you want this on the free channel, Lauren and Bernard, uh you got to decide now uh it, it won't probably won't make it till like the middle to end of September. Okay, here's my question. Are we doing one for the OVR manufacturer event or is this going to be included tonight? It's going to be included. I I scratch your microphone. Yeah, you're not on your microphone, buddy. Hold on. I'll fix it. Yeah, this is the behind the scenes. So in the studio tonight, we have Bernard Helen of miniprints.com, uh, one of the the best, the yeah, Buzz, a.k.a. Buzz, the best 3D print manufacturer in North America, possibly the world. Uh, they have a great great website, miniprints.com, and... Uh, if you if you want if you're gonna go buy stuff there, tell them Lionel sent you. Yeah, that's that's good, Lauren. <laughs> this is quality podcast. Yeah, yeah. The gerbil the gerbil is at my internet. We're good. We're good. Uh, yeah. Well, this would answer your question from your live event last night, Lauren, or I mean Bernard. Do you really yeah. want people to see this, hear this for free? I don't know. I mean, I'm torn. I mean. You know, with a lovely introduction like that, I feel like the world should hear it. But but now it's gone downhill so quickly. I I don't know. Yeah, and uh, Mike, you don't really. Mike Houck is also here from uh, beautiful Erie, Pennsylvania. Hello. It's not technically Erie, is it? It's it's outside Erie. Yeah. What's the name of the town you're in? Fairview. Fairview, Pennsylvania, which is just a stone's throw away from beautiful downtown Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Go sea wolves. Go yeah, sea wolves. Yeah, go wolves. Go wolves. Go wolves. <laughs> sea wolves, yeah. Which is really uh, barely more than 30 miles away from Canada. Hot it speed, is. Hot speed boat away. Yeah, one good yeah. speed boat away on, on, a, which, on a calm evening. On a calm evening. A, what's that? Would have saved me a lot of driving time if we just cut right across. Yeah. Yeah, we looked at that. Long Point wasn't that far. I offered, I offered the neighbor's paddleboard, but he didn't want to. Uh, Barnard didn't want to do that. I don't know. It, it's really tough to balance a uh, a Highlander on a paddleboard. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you, you'd leave that in my driveway. You just take your suitcase across. Yeah, and, oh, and right. Uber, yeah. Uber your way home from there. Bernard, when you told me it took you three and a half hours to get to Erie, I I was tempted to ask you if you drove backwards, but but we'll leave that. Well, I actually was going from Erie to home, so uh, it was the other way. All right. Still, it took you three and a half hours. How long? Of course, you don't have an access card, do you? Oh, you do have an yeah, access card. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. You just, God, it was you, taking me four and a half hours. Exactly. You fly through the border with your Nexus card. because You actually do. I was do. the only person. I was the only person in the Nexus line. I know. And it's like a, not an, even a line. No, you're, you're, spe it's... you're special because the FBI said you are. And they give you free Tim Hortons. They do? No. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, yeah, now you're just saying free, free cup of coffee with every Nexus entry. Okay, so let's uh, let's organize this up now. What are you two guys? We got uh, Lauren uh, James of Otter Valley Railroad, who has lots to talk about. And we have young... Oh, yeah, you'd want this. If we put this on the free channel, you'd like this to be out before uh, September the 16th, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's put it on the free channel. You're okay. the man, the overlord. You're the man. We'll so make... wait, does this mean? Does this now mean we have to make it good or bad? Hang on, let me look at the Bernard. Big... We set the bar low already. It's all the way up from here, baby. It's all the way up from here. Let me look okay, at the big good. calendar on the wall. This will be aired on September the 11th. This show today is September the 11th. Lionel is throwing the heat tonight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's that's exciting. So so uh, Lauren. Yes, Lionel. You're having a special event at Otter Valley Railway on September the Saturday, September the sixteenth. That's correct. Will you be featuring Rapido trains? Yes, we will be. <sighs> there are fast track to model trains. Fun. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't worry. The check's in the mail. I'm good. Oh, my God. We're good. Someone didn't. No, how come Bruce isn't here? Because I already had three guys. Okay, but clearly no one knows what to do. No. Somebody should have got the brief ahead of time. Yeah. yeah it's really. re- when I say Rapido Trains, Bernard, it's your job to say you the are fast track, track to model track railroad, the model fun. railroad fun. Yeah, and yeah. you don't say Rapido Trains. I say no. Rapido Trains. And I say you're fast track to model railroad fun. Perfect. How do you like That's that? Jing- how, how do you like our jingles, Mike? Oh, they're great. I was singing one in the shower the other morning. Like, how, did, how, did, how did this get in my head? <laughs> I can't get that picture out of my head now. Yeah, exactly. That's a well, yeah, I, T, TMI. They're catchy. They're, they're catchy. They're catchy. They are very catchy, and they're uh, they were done courtesy of our buddy David Hyde out there in Dallas, in the Dallas Fort Worth area with uh, and uh, because he's a he's a musical guy. He knows all kinds of musical stuff. So he made j- the jingles for us and we very much appreciate it. And by now he should be a super fan because I figure if you take, uh, if you make jingles to help the uh, cause, that's got to make you a super fan. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, sec- okay. I second the motion. I second the motion. Yeah. Well, you don't really have a vote, so it doesn't really matter. Do you want my David Hyde story now or later? Uh, yeah. Okay. This would be a suitable time for a David Hyde story. But first, Bernard. Uh, when, when you, have you been to David, you haven't been to David Hyde's, uh, layout home. No, but I've been invited. Right. And do you think he has Rapido trains? I think he has your fast track to model railroad <laughs> on his layout. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> what do you mean? Jason is just pounding his head against the desk. Uh, yeah, I know. Exactly. It's like, I can't, and right now Jason's going, I can't believe I'm paying for this. That was perfect. <laughs> you, no, I say me. I say Rapido trains, and then you gave me a couple of words, and then you said it. It's, it, it's and I a, said, put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Rapido trains. Your, Your fast, fast track, track to model railroading fun. Rapido trains. Your fast track to model railroading fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun. <laughs> All together now. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready, Mike. We're going to the uh, down to the triple A team. All right, I'm loosening up. <laughs> All right, uh, Bernard, what's your David Hyde story? Uh, David Hyde uh, was down in uh, St. Louis, and I met him, and we talked about uh, visiting his layout in the upcoming, uh, actually now just previous NMRA convention that I just got back from in Texas. And apparently when I was down there, I scanned him with his French horn on his head. On his head? Yes, we decided that he would wear his French horn on his head. Wow. Yeah, because that would be quite the scan, wouldn't it? I wonder if there's other people in the orchestra that are as hip as David. He's, you know, it was really fun meeting him. He's a pretty hip guy. He is a very hip guy. He's a very fun guy. He's a very, very, uh, he fits into the AML nation perfectly. He's got the AML cool portfolio down to a science. I met him as well, and uh, he said he was coming up to Canada to find the America's Most Wanted Modeler named Lionel Strang. So he's, he, and he said he's going to come see OBR too. So he got my he got my vote instantly right then. There you go. And uh, yeah, we may or may not have shared some uh, chicken wings in Buffalo by now. Oh, oh, because he's coming to. Uh, he had to have a. It's a it's a symphony orchestra thing, but anyways, he had to have. These guys, when they need to, they they find the the person in the in the one of the people in the world that can teach them how to change the way they play the French horn or whatever instrument it is. So n- somehow he ended up near Buffalo, uh, doing something to, to do with his French horn, and then uh, I took him for some wings or not. We'll have to wait and see. If if no, if nobody's figured it out by now, we're actually recording this before. September 11th. <laughs> and, that works? I wonder how that worked. And suddenly we see behind the velvet curtain. There you go. We're seeing how a sausage is made. All right. right. So what the, the general purpose of tonight's show is uh, several fold. Uh, first off, uh, both Bernard and Lauren yes. were at the uh, RPM meet in Collinsville, Illinois. Illinois, Illinois just outside of St. Louis. On the yep. other side or, of the river, right? East Correct. side. Yep. And then, and then uh, we're also going to talk about uh, Lauren's upcoming big event at Otter Valley Railway. 
Correct. And we're also going to talk about uh, Bernard's trip back from Collinsville, where he stopped into Erie, Pennsylvania, and uh, visited a couple of layouts, and one of them being Mike's. And I thought, well, he'd be ideal to help with that portion of the proceedings. What a show. What an incredible lineup. And, and Mike, feel free to interject, ask questions, jump in uh, at any time during the proceedings. Okay, I shall. Yeah. And don't be like Kelly, where like you don't have any questions. <laughs> okay. Like make stuff up, you know. Okay. <laughs> like if you if you're stumbling for something, go. So do you think the Cleveland Browns are going to do anything this year? It's anything, uh, just you know, to help keep moving the show along. Because God, we're going to need it. Yeah. <laughs> just move. Just move the chains, Mike. Just move the chains. Yeah. Just move, just move the, the chains. Move the chains. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, please. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, first to 20 on the first down. All right, yeah, there you go. go. Okay, so you two guys. So, Bernard, you went and you took all your gear or your, your gear met you in Collinsville and you did scans. And you and I had had a discussion before you went mm -hmm. that you were concerned that you weren't going to get because uh, not many people had signed up. And I said to you, uh, I bet you when you get there and people see what you're doing, you'll be very busy. And it turned out you did how many? 37? 37 sold out and you were a hundred percent correct. There were like nine scans when I set off on Wednesday. And by the end of the event, I was turning people away. Wow. And so then, you, you nailed it. I nailed it. And you what, nailed it. what did, what, what have we learned from this, uh, Bernard? Pick up the phone when Lionel calls. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> why, why else do you have one? <laughs> exactly. All right. So you get there. And so what what happened, like you set up your stuff and you already had a couple of scans booked, but pretty quickly you kind of drew a crowd. Is that what it was? Yeah, um, I think. And it's I was talking to a couple of the organizers. Uh, people weren't really sure until they saw the product. So I brought down a whole bunch of scans that I did, little mini Lynels and you know other scans that I'd done. And I think people, once they saw the product and once they saw that you really can be shrunk down, to 187th or 148th or you know even 160th scale uh people got it and they wanted it they wanted to be shrunk and put on their layouts and it's kind of like here take my money it was a lot of fun it really was there was uh there were some amazing poses i'm actually uh looking at some of the scans right now i did a few uh celebrity scans that will be coming of sort of notable people that, you know, whose names you would recognize. Uh, and uh, lots of Mini Prince customers came out. And I've got a lot of work ahead of me to clean everybody up and print them out and send them off in the mail. So can you tell us who the notables were, the celebrities were? Well, I did, I did four scans, which I think people will recognize as the uh, behind the desk, uh, what's neat this week crew. Oh, yeah. So I did James Regeer, okay. uh, who very graciously took me around and showed me some of the sites of uh, uh, St. Louis. Uh, and then I did the dude himself. You did the dude. Yeah. 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 Wow. So Ken. Ken got scanned. Ken Patterson of What's Neat This Week. Can I ask you? Uh, can then, I can I ask you a question? And it's, of course, I get a, uh, try to give me an honest answer. Could he literally? I, st could he literally stand still that long? He screamed, no. but he did it. He screamed, but he did it. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> honestly, it was a stretch. <laughs> 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 I cannot, I cannot lie to you, Lionel. Yeah. It was touch and go, but, but we got it. We got it. We made it happen. Yeah. Because if you don't stand still, you don't get the, what happens when, when you're trying to do a scan and something happens, a person's just a, is a fidgeter or they don't stand still. Like, uh, do you just have to keep starting from the beginning again? If it's really bad, I'll start from scratch. If I have a fighting chance of fixing it in post-production, then I will fix it digitally after the fact. I mean, because a scan only gets you about 80% there, right? You know, there's still a lot of cleaning and massaging and, you know, computer work. So, you know, if I think that, you know, I can fix it, I'll fix it. If I don't, then I'll say we go again. And when you say post-production, I mean, I think that's interesting for people. I've kind of seen it in person that it comes up on your computer screen and there'll be 
spots that are kind of like missing. Like somehow there'll be, you know, a, a little yeah. spot on the back of the person's shirt or something that's missing and you just kind of fill it in. Sure, because you're bouncing beams of light off people. So it's not going to see, you know, underneath the arms or, you know, anywhere in the shadow. So there's a little bit of fixing. I figure I've probably got four to five hours in per scan by the time I go from scanning to post-production to print to ship it out the door. It's about a four-hour process per scan. And how much do you charge? Like 90 bucks or something? Not enough. Not enough. It's 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 a uh, it's it's not meant to be a break even proposition. It's meant to be a let's have some fun. Okay, and uh, and to make people aware of mini prints. Absolutely, and it's it's a hoot. I mean, it's you know it really is fun. There's some great poses. I'm really excited to get these up on the site so people can take a look at them. Are, are these going to be uh, commercially available? I mean, did the did the folks kind of sign the rights over to you that if their scan would, turned out really cool, you could go ahead and sell them on your site then? Absolutely. And most people are are very gracious and will let me list their scan. I'd say that about 90 to 95%. You know, there are a few people that say they prefer not to, and I respect that. You know, it's their, it's their image. Uh, but uh, most people are thrilled to be uh, a mini me and, you know, show their friends that they've been scanned and and, and then and uh, yeah. and for that ninety dollars, I think uh it don't does not include X number of figures or something? Five. Yep, five individual uh printouts. And do they have to establish the scale before you print them out? I like them too. I used to say that they could have anything they wanted, and then people would pick sort of one of each scale. And each time you do it, it's it's the same amount of work per scale, because you can't just, you know, press a button and have it, you know upsize or downsize so i've now limited it to any one scale but you know if you want you know four ho and one o scale that's fine too i just i don't want people to say i'll have you know n h o s o right. yeah, 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 you know right, one right. of each right and where where ex where exactly oh, man i would have paid money to see you scanning the dude <laughs> there's a video of it he's you're, got a video of it you're lucky i wasn't there I wish you were. Oh, are you kidding me? Me, me, giving the, the harassing the dude while he's being scanned. You would have been there for days trying to get that. That thing. would have been quality podcast <laughs> material. Come on, <laughs> you'd been, you'd been, you'd been chasing me down the street. Going, get away from me. Well, that's, that's a normal day. <laughs> yeah, the old true. AML. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> There's nothing new about that, Lionel. <laughs> So where were you? Well, How many vendors were there at this place? Because I've seen the big uh, the room where all the tables are. Are the vendors in the same room? Yes. And let's back up for one second. First off, I have to say, uh, shout out, kudos, thank you goes to uh, Lauren, because it was Lauren's idea. Lauren came to me. I don't remember when, Lauren, but you said, are you going down to Collinsville? And I hummed and hawed. And he said, come on, let's go down together, not travel together, but let's both go. And I have to say, it was fantastic. I mean, I would put it in the same category as Springfield, uh, not necessarily because of the size, although it was sizable, uh, but it was just so much fun. And there were such amazing vendors and it, it was a great event. For how unique and quiet the room was, Bernard, the quality was amazing. The talent was phenomenal. The fact that there was 4,000 models on display, over 40 dioramas, some of the best people in industries. There was big manufacturers there. There was up and coming, a lot of 3Ds. Yep. Like, I was a little hesitant, too. And I know you and I had talked, like, I don't know. And I'm like, you know what? Let, let's do this because this is the RPM of North America. And there's a reason why... Lonnie and the crew have a program, have a system, have almost matched their attendance records, have yep. a system with the hotels, have outside people, have tours. It's got the rail fanning aspect. It's got the lit tour aspect. It's got the dude. It's got numerous recognizable people. And it had quality manufacturers and quality models in the room. And it was, I would consider this right behind Springfield in my Estimation. Completely agreed. And I would say for anyone listening who's thinking about going it's a next year. List. It's a bucket list. It Absolutely is. Absolutely a bucket list. I mean, I'm going next year for sure. I'm going back. Can we go and to together? answer your question specifically, Lionel. Can we go, uh, can we, can we go together? Yeah. <laughs> 
Like, you think we could get Scott to drive us in the bus? Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. Ooh. You think he'd come and pick us up? Uh, actually, there'd I'm... be lots of room for all my gear. Actually, or have or have the AML event at Collinsville RPM. Yeah, you know, so yeah, we could do that. Either. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, or at the dude's house. Ooh. <laughs> and I'm no, just... better yet, better yet, we'll take we'll tell the whole AML nation to meet at Mike's house. In beautiful downtown Erie, Pennsylvania. And then we'll go from there. We'll, we'll all camp out on Mike's lawn for like a couple of days. Ooh. Uh, uh, can, you, can you repeat that? You're kind of breaking up there. I just, <laughs> squatter's uh, rights now. That. Squatter's rights. Well, squatter's wait, wait. Right. Having just been there, I will say it looks to me like he has quite a large yard. Okay. So that would work well, That's then. inviting. That's inviting. It would. There, there's a bit of property there. All right. Cool. All right. Well, there you go. That's what we'll do then. Uh, well, don't anybody tell him. We'll just show up. Okay. Remember, Mike, if you give Lionel an inch, he's going to take a mile. Just remember. <laughs> well, we, we do a farm property further out. You guys, there's there's 250 acres you can park out there. Free range, right, free range, cool. free range. You can put, a, you can put up oh, a wow. circus tent out there if you want. Do you have a farm? Jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have a farm property out you, further towards the Ohio, Ohio border. But is it a horses? farm? Uh, there's about yeah, about 90 acres cultivated. The rest is oh. kind of woods and an old pasture and right. whatnot. And, yeah. but you're not working it. So you rent it out probably. Yeah. 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 I just lease it out. Okay. Uh, there's cool. a, there's a fellow that, that plants it. Well, tell keeps him, the tell him, cut. Yeah. Tell him next year to be prepared. To, we'll be planting. We'll be parking on his lawn then. The entire AML. Could <laughs> yeah. We could have the entire oh, AML. No. Yeah. The big 10 is coming. Yeah. So, but when you were there, did any of you see any Rapido trains? Your fast track to model railroad fun. If it's M, if it's H O, the fast track is rapido. See, now we're getting it. Now we're getting it. See, this is perfect. They, this is we're going to. They were there. Oh, of course they were. I'm sure they were. Bill was there. Bill Schneider. Right. And uh, Dan Darnell came down. Cool. From Trana. Trana. And it's yep. kind of like, kind of like old home week for you. It was. Um, it was so much fun. Yeah, you. But you make your own fun, Bernard. You know what, oh. Bernard? Fun follows you around. You wouldn't believe the stories I have. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> have I got have I got fun for you? Where do we get to? Where do we get to the part? Yeah, where do we get to the part where you're on the dude show and we'll tell the we'll tell the preliminary part to that. Um. Uh, so, okay. Where were you guys in relation to each other in the vendor in the room? So one end, so is it basically one end of a big ball kind of ballroom kind of set up at a convention, you know, how in convention centers, they have these movable walls. Did you guys, was it like a big gigantic room? And at one end was the models and at the other end is the vendors. So it's half like, the room was divider. So the, where the divider was, was the entrance for the RPM guys. And the other half was the manufacturers dealers, historical societies, the layout, and that's kind of how they split it. So there was an actual divider wall? Yes. Okay. It was there was open. But yeah. I will correct you one thing. It's kind of not halves, it was thirds. Because I would say that one third of the ballroom were the four thousand some odd models. One third of the ballroom uh was the manufacturers, the the vendors. And then one third uh, was the most spectacular and quite ginormous Fremo setup. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was spectacular. Okay. Um, we're going to have to get, uh, I hope Dave, Dave, Dave Owens, I know you're listening to this. Uh, you got to have to up your game, buddy, because they had like 800 plus attendees. We got to, somehow we got to, we got to get uh, the old NERPM, excuse me. NERPM uh, event uh, got to get it amped up too. This I think part of I think part of the St. Louis thing is uh, is the locale. Like it's fairly it's fairly central to the country. They're North America, anyways. I mean, it's not far from Toronto. It's not far from Pittsburgh. It's not far from Chicago. It's not far from. It's very close to St. Louis. It's not far from Kansas City. I mean, there's a lot of big cities that are you know six, seven, eight hour drive only you know a six seven eight hour drive away it also has the pedigree i mean because it's been going for what 20 some odd years i think they said is that and the oldest one is that is st louis the oldest one well naperville know. naperville was yeah okay. okay and then it seems to me there was a uh the fellow what's his first name tom thompson 
There was, I think there was one out in California too that might have been the the seed that started the whole thing. Oh, the one up in the the Bay Area, the yes. Bay Area RPM. Yes, the that's like the. That's the, I think that's the I think that's the granddaddy of them all. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'll just tell you, yeah. one of the things I've been to three RPMs. This was my third RPM, and I will tell you that one of the things about this one is that it was extremely well organized. There were layout tours. There were clinics, there were manufacturers. I mean, it really felt like a show. It really, it was, I would say there was an RPM on steroids. Okay. What are the other RPMs you've been to? Uh, Toronto had one for a number of years, and I went to the Toronto RPM for three years in a row. And then I was at the Mid-Atlantic RPM, uh, Bernard uh, Kapensky. Yep. I think I'm saying his last name wrong. Uh, He has the... Uh, that's the mid-Atlantic one the mid-Atlantic one I was there last year because it was the same weekend as Timonium oh okay and we bumped into the whole AML crowd there Kaylee Zhang gave a clinic and Tom Jacobs was there as well as many many other AMLers um, so where in the room in re- were you guys in relationship to each other 30 feet 30 feet oh really yeah Close yeah. enough for Izzy to run over and steal my shrink ray gun every five minutes. <laughs> that must have been Izzy doing that. Oh, yeah. That was Izzy. That was uh, Lauren, uh, Lauren's daughter, Isa, Isabel. And you in, my, her. in her defense, Bernard, she was excited to see you. She was happy. You know what? You. I was excited to see her. Yeah. She's fantastic. Yeah. There was a great picture. Where, where, where did I see it, Lauren, of you and your wife and Izzy and, and somebody else at the table? What picture was that that I saw? Was that on the so, fans page? Or did I see it, or where did I see it? Uh, that could have been on the OVR page or my personal. Um, there was a picture of me, Sarah, and Izzy that Otto took for RMC. Tony Cook took a couple of pictures. I know the dude did a video interview of the family at the table, and I know there was a bunch of snaps taken. Yeah, it might have, have been, a, might have been on the dude's page actually. Yeah. All right, and you, but yeah, you guys. So all right, so and you're you're so you were pretty busy too, weren't you, Lauren? It was really exciting for me. Like um, I got to meet Butcheller, who just had his article in the recent book from White River. He he got some of our cars and was talking with Sarah and giving her weathering tips. Uh, Mark Teetle, he I've talked to him in the Midwest. He came up and got a lot of our cars. Um, I talked to a bunch of different manufacturers. Some of them are really proud of the work we were done. We announced three freight cars. Or actually, we teased three freight cars at the show. So I had a lot of people come up excited about that. Um, all the guys from the uh, What's 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 Neat show, they all talked to me, interviewed me. We had a picture group picture together. Goalie George, he come around. We had dinner one night with him. Goalie George and, and uh, Sarah and Izzy and I. Um, it was just exciting. Like It was a fun time. Yeah. Absolutely fun time. I don't know where I saw that picture, but it was a great picture. And you said, so, oh, yeah. So Butch Eiler came up to you. Did I hope you mentioned me because uh, I want to go ahead. Absolutely, I did. Oh, excellent. Scott Thornton came up to me. I was talking with Scott. David Hyde came up. I talked to him. Uh, David Perkins. Um, a father, son, and grand, grandfather came up to me. There was three generations of mothers I met, which which was amazing. Huh. You, you get the picture. This was a pretty well attended show. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of, but uh, and a uh, and uh, a well attended show by avid model railroaders. It yeah. really was like their regional show. Like a lot of the guys, the way James Regeer described it, and a few others was like, "This is our train show, but it's our event of the Midwest." And there's so many people that come from both sides of the Mississippi. There was numerous modelers from the lower part of the Gulf, like. There was so much talent in that room that you could have found a knowledgeable expert on pretty much every class one in the room and probably two to three dozen fall on flags. Easy. And at the end of the day, I mean, it was about everything. It was about the people first and foremost. But I've never seen such a collection of models. I mean, oh the models were, I mean, you have, it's one of those shows where you don't know whether to run home and you know, you're so energized that you immediately want to start modeling 
you know, you hit the workbench and you just like, you know, this is it. You're recharged for a year. Right. Or whether you just come home and say, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> <You know? laughs> just... <laughs> but, I, but Bernard, I mean, that had a, that, that, like three of the dioramas were car dealerships, beautifully detailed. There was a, a space shuttle with working cranes. There was the beautiful, I, I fell in love with the guy that had the, the maintenance away diorama with all the equipment staged on low boys, getting serviced. Like even, for, even the models alone, the dioramas were just top notch one of my favorite models and i think i've decided i was trying i was thinking about how to articulate an rpm for you lionel when i was sort of thinking about the show and i realized that besides the artistry and the craftsmanship and the absolute spectacular modeling it's just so interesting because it's like a history lesson so one of my favorite models and the thing about the rpm is that People will do their beautiful, faithfully reproduced model, but then they'll have a photograph right beside it. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, you know, what it is that they're trying to reproduce. And one of the models that really caught my attention was a World War II model of a B was it B-39 bomber? 38. B-38 bomber. And it was a perfectly created model of a 38 B-38 bomber wing on a flat car, complete with all the photographs from World War II. And the modeling was spectacular, but the history lesson that went around along with it was just amazing. Now that's uh let's go to let's go to an old an old song that I'm constantly singing. Did you guys walk away thinking to yourself, this hobby is like spectacular? Beyond. Yeah, like absolutely. I, like I you, fell, I fell deeper in love with the hobby after the event. I'm oh really gosh, like, yes. Oh, oh yeah. God. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, that's kind of yeah. Uh, that's where we're going, isn't it? I mean, the hobby that you keep going to these things, like you know, and you guys have gone to this now, and you're kind of like you're walking away, going, "Holy crap!" The passion, the fire, just gets deeper for me. I mean, a couple of the guys came up to my booth and they asked me about the Norfolk and Western caboose I had on the table, and they're like, "What's the story?" I'm like, "This is the real life model that inspired me to be into trains, inspired me to fall in love with trains." And they're like, "You get to make one?" I'm like, "Yes," but everybody in this room has inspired me more to bring out more of those type of models and to push my skills or product or whatever, so I can keep my passion and fire on for the next generation and, and inspire it because. Bernard, I saw guys that were 90 plus that still had the fire and it was amazing. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. If you're ever suffering from model railroad burnout, <laughs> go to an RPM. Well, that's it, like, it, well, yeah, it's that's like the, 20, it's like 20 Red Bulls in one day. You just take it. That's It'll the, cure you. That's it. Okay. So let me ask you this. The experience I had at NERPM now, uh, Dave Owens is a special kind of guy and he, his whole uh, Dave Owens and John Sacerdote, I think they were put on this planet to make, people just feel good. And so, I mean, when I came away from NERPM, I was just like, what I enjoyed the most about it was the camaraderie and how, how everybody was trying to be, you know, friendly with everybody else. Did you get that feeling with a much bigger event? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got the feeling at St. Louis, but I mean, part of the whole thing was, and I mean, a big shout out to uh, James Regeer. He took me around the first night. And we went uh, rail fanning in a place called Granite City, uh, which is all old industrial buildings, U.S. steel, and, you know, just spectacular. If you're into industrial switching, you know, Granite City is the place to be. So, you know, we got to spend some really fun rail timing, rail fanning time together. Uh, the second night... Um, Mike Buddy and Joshua Barton took me around uh, and showed me some of the the UP yards in St. Louis. So you know you're 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 hanging out with people that you're either friends with or that you you know might have met once or twice before, and you know those are really the the fun memories for me. Yeah, exactly. All right, Bernard. So you or not Bernard? Uh, sit down for a minute, Bernard. Uh, Lauren. Uh, now, Mike, have you ever been? You've never been to St. Louis, have you? Uh, well, not in a rail capacity. My, my daughter was out there for a year completing her studies, but I, you know, I was never to a convention or anything out there. Have you ever thought about going to the RPM meet? Oh, I've been to the uh, one that was this past spring down in uh, New Stanton, the old Green Greensburg right? one. Yeah, yeah near, uh, near Pittsburgh. Yep, yep. But have you ever thought about going to the one in St. Louis? 
Um, not really. It kind of wasn't on my radar, but listen to these guys talk. I mean, it's, 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 it sounds like it's four, it was four times the size of the one that was down outside Pittsburgh. And yeah, I think walking away, this is the biggest one walking away by at least twice. The I Mac, don't, I don't think there's Mac another Daddy. one. That, yeah. I don't think there's the a, Mac Daddy. Yeah. I don't think there's another yeah. one that gets to 400 attendees and these guys are over 800. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think the, this one, uh, the, uh, uh, the RPM East, uh, I think they were, they got 212 or 215 people, I think. And they were, they were pretty happy with that. And it was, I had a blast, but yeah. I can't imagine, I can't imagine something four times that size. That's I crazy. Know. It's just, uh, that's and, why, why I wanted to talk about it. Go ahead. Uh, and, and the crazy thing, Lionel, is they would have probably pushed to nine to a thousand had the NMRA mid-region convention wasn't on the same weekend in Kansas City. Oh yeah, that's right. It was, wasn't it? So like there was like... I would think next year will probably be their biggest show ever. And I, Lonnie and the group are already taking head counts. Who was returning hotel accommodations? What can they do? Like their ground game was impressive. They had their surveys ready. They asked my wife, okay, what did you like? What did you didn't like? What can we do? How did you find your stay? How can we accommodate you better? What do you need? Like very attentive, very attentive crew. And like, I'm just and a, a big committee. There were like six, I think six guys six uh, that were on the board. Yeah, six of the yeah, board. Yeah, six six uh, on the committee, and it was very well organized. What about the hotels? Where where is that? Right beside the Gateway Center. Oh, okay. It it was perfect. Yeah, I was in the Double Tree, Lauren. You were in the La La Quinta. La Quinta. La Quinta. La Quinta. La <laughs> uh, and I mean, both of these were. You can't even say walking distance. They were right next door. I mean, okay. It so it's like less than a food, walk. And food all around us. And if you needed a Walmart, it was down the street. If you needed a Starbucks, it was down the street. If you needed a rail fanning fix, the Kansas City Southern Yard was 20 minutes away. If you needed a baseball fix, like I did Sunday and almost gave my wife heat stroke. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> I do mean sorry. Izzy enjoyed it. She was a picture of her wrapping her head around the, the Guerrero jersey while she was stuffing popcorn in her mouth and having a fan on her because it was 92 at field level. There were so many good things around it, and you're right off the interstate. So, I mean, you can hop, chop, go. And where, so, it was and perfect. I remember giving you a hard time about that. You were telling me you went to the Cardinals game, but you're sitting out in the bleachers or something. No, we sat first base row. I was okay. 10, feet away from, 10 feet away from first baseline. All right, good for you. She just hot, but it was hot down there, Lionel. It was hot. Oh, it was hot. 115. It's hot, it's hot everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, uh, St. Louis is especially hot. When we moved our daughter out there, it was, I don't know, 98, and the humidity was 98. Uh, God, it was <laughs> <laughs> hot. Hot does not do it justice. It yes, was, exactly. It was tropical. <laughs> there, there's hot, and then there's, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. right. Well, so long as you don't wear your jeans the whole time, you'll be all right. Uh, I hope you're wearing shorts. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. Lauren, have I seen you in shorts? Yeah. Okay, just asking. I, that's, obviously, it didn't make that much of an impression on me. <laughs> There's pictures of you and I getting our right angle at the first OVR event where I was wearing shorts. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So now let's uh, t- turn to Lauren because you went because you have, you're you now starting to manufacture freight cars. and yeah. And so then you took your, your, gar- your trash or garbage car. What's the proper word? Uh, municipal waste. Municipal solid waste or or scrap cars. We took a, a good selection of those, plus the handmade loads that Hilda made. The handmade loads we sold out. Every single load that we, she made sold out. That was over sixty loads. Uh, really a good. Yep, people loved the loads. Uh, made a good, and we sold a very good amount of cars. Not enough that Sarah was happy with, but I was happy with. <laughs> uh, she didn't have enough room to shop, so she was annoyed with. So this, so does Sarah just basically yell at you the whole time? <laughs> her role is director of change and initiatives lionel so you can figure that out yeah and you're uh because she your your, your wife uh, sarah was a nurse was she not yep she's a registered nurse right and now she's le- uh, she's left that now and she's working full-time with you at your store yep she is she is part of the family business yeah she will be the family business at some point yeah you know what you're gonna learn lauren and you probably already do know this it's the same situation for me. I'm the president of the company. I don't have any power, but I am the president of the company. <laughs> on, pa- on paper, it matters, but uh, but the re- outside of their office, I lose all autonomy. I'm well aware of that. Lineup. Yeah, inside the office, I lose all autonomy. 
Um, okay, so all right, so you took your your let's call them trash cars for simplicity's yep. sake. The sixty four hundred and the six thousand. I'm slowly learning that. I'm going to understand it by the time you're sold out. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> will, will you? Would you make a? Would you do another run? Like because you've had pretty good success selling these cars. Yeah, we 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 have discussed it. Once we get the second and third car here. We want to see where things are our middle of middle of October the fall, and then we'll announce uh, future runs. Okay. And uh, second and third car, you mean your pipe car? Yep. All right. So yep. what? So and you had samples of that with you, didn't you? We had the production samples with us as well as the pipe loads. Uh, really good feedback. Um, I gave Tony Cook uh, from Mother Railroad News a package. So he has a package for his upcoming uh, magazine. So he's got a pipe car. Uh, a car, uh, another car, plus all our sample loads. So he's going to have that an upcoming uh, magazine feature. Um, Otto Von Drack from RMC interviewed us, did pictures, and then they're going to have a package for RMC. And then uh, the dude shot uh, all three cars outside, beautiful natural sunlight off the uh, the bluffs there off the Mississippi River. Um, and it was featured on the car. No, we showed the three. Then we showed a couple unique OVR exclusive ones. One was the Norfolk and Western Atlas Caboose, where it's got the Canadian operations decal. And uh, uh, Mike, slow down. So, what? Explain that to me a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm, go, I'm going a mile a minute again. Okay. Uh, well, no, no, you're doing. Where? No, you're doing fine. You're doing fine, actually. I, actually, Lauren, I was talking to you today, uh, talking about you to somebody today, and telling them how much I enjoy. Uh, your friendship and how well you're doing and everything. And I was just, uh, I was, I was extolling the virtues of Lauren today to somebody. So you, so you weren't going too fast, but I have a question that, that you somehow got involved with Atlas and they produced a special car for you. Yeah. So on top of making our own stuff for probably since 2000, actually since 2011, OVR has been making special exclusive runs with all the major manufacturers, and that would be exclusive OVR items. So we did some Bowser stuff, we've done some Walters, we've done some Intermountain stuff, and we've done some Atlas, and we've done some Rapido. Your fast track um, to model railroad fun. Exactly. That's what I bang. was going for. Boom. Well done. Well yeah. done. Boom. And um, so I was showing off our Atlas uh, Wide Vision Caboose, and this caboose was a Norfolk and Western caboose that I grew up with. It, it inspired me. I've, I've said this story about many times, and I'll say the story again. When I first grew up, um, I played baseball a lot, and our practice uh, diamond was in a little hamlet called Corinth, and it's just between Tilsonburg and Elmer, Ontario. And every Saturday morning, there'd be an eastbound and westbound Norfolk and Southern train carrying auto parts or finished cars from my from my dad's Ford St. Thomas assembly plant. And on the end of the train had the Norfolk and Western Canadian Operation Caboose. The train was cool seeing these Norfolk and Southern locomotives with the big horse on them, but I was impressed with the caboose. I'd never seen a caboose in my life. And the first ever caboose I saw was 55020, and that's one of the models that we're bringing out with Atlas. So how does that work? You just call Atlas up and say, "Hey, I wanna, I want you to do a special run of this car." Like, what, how? What's the process? Like, do they even know who you are when you call them? Oh, they know who I am. <laughs> they know. Everybody knows who Lauren. Everybody is. knows who Lauren James is, and I don't say that to be in an arrogant way. I but know that. I know. There's a lot of people that lean on me for peer review information. In for feedback for customer trends, um, what you're trends a, I'm seeing. I'm I'm a, a I'm a source. I'm, you're a player. Oh, he's a player. He's don't a hate, player. Don't hate the don't hate the player. Hate the game. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. But, so how did so just really briefly? So you'll see that they're releasing this particular model, and you'll go, "Oh man, I'd love to have a special run of that." And then they you call them up and say, and they'll tell you your minimum order is X, and then. That you'll and then agree. I send them off some. Then I send them off some prototype fixtures and see if we have a fit. And 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 then they'll you know you'll, you'll obviously you get some sort of a sizable discount or whatever it is they do, and then they mm -hmm. send you however x many cars it is, and it's always a fairly large number. Yep. And, and then and so how did you do sell? Have you sold out that caboose, sir? Well, we haven't formally let anybody buy the caboose because I'm hoping to have it for our event on September the 16th. Oh, okay. Nice, nice segue. Yeah. 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 Which is only five days away. Exactly. Yeah. 
if you don't get the caboose on December 16th, I'll be in the back having a smoke with all the rest of the guys taking a stress smoke <laughs> for me out there. You stress, <laughs> you stress too much. <laughs> so you are, you are an excellent businessman and you're doing great. So you, you gotta, I, we were kind of having this discussion the other day and I was saying like, chill out, dude, it's just the ebb and flow of the world. I know. Yeah. I know. You, uh, you got to sit at the big table. I tried to get you there. <laughs> I did. I tried. I was. I was trying to give you some pull. I really was. That's what's all right. The, what, what's the big table? He was at the desk at the What's Neat This Week desk. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we still got to do that. That's another hour and a half show right there. Just you guys at the dude. With, Two hours easily. Um. So can I tell? Can I tell my story about that, Bernard, or would that embarrass you? Uh, I don't know. What's the story? So I, whenever I'm in Toronto, often. Uh, you know, whenever I, you know, if I'm uh, doing one of my uh, hospital visits and I and I leave and I say to myself, Lionel, you're down in the dumpers now. You need to pick me up. And fortunately, uh, the Mini Prince World Headquarters is just a stone's throw away from where I might be. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just going to drop in on Mini Prince World Headquarters and see what's happening for a pick me up. And I know I'll feel a lot better when I leave. <laughs> that's right because we specialize in fun yeah that's right there you go <laughs> so i went over to mini prince uh, unannounced and i'm banging on the door and there's like nothing and uh so then i send him a text and i'm like well where uh, i was here with a picture and he then the next thing i know is he opens the door and he says will you please stop banging on the door and when he opened it i pushed my way in it was, yeah, it was, and security didn't get there in time. Yeah. Not even close. Uh, but you were, you were concerned about going to see the dude because you well, were, uh, let me finish my, it's my, I'm talking now. It's my story, story yeah. my story. So you were your concerned story. about going to visit the dude only because it's a, uh, it's a busy spot. The dude is the dude. And if you're going to do a scan of him, it's a uh, full, uh, full, everybody on board. You got to pay attention. And I said, it's the dude. You got to go to see the dude. Yep. Period. End of sentence. And he says, you think? And I'm like, Bernard, it's the dude. Everybody needs to see the dude. <laughs> and you know what? I really enjoyed seeing his layout. Yeah, he's got a beautiful you know, layout. He, he really does. I mean, and it it's when you see it on the, you know, the YouTube machine, it doesn't do it justice because it's huge. It goes right around the whole basement you know i've only ever seen little snippets of it uh but it, it's a really good layout it's a really well done layout he's an excellent modeler yep 100 percent. and he's the dude he's the dude yeah exactly and we we were we were treated to the full dudery <laughs> <laughs> because he's very punctual his show started right on time at 10 10 after 10 p.m. That's the best part. Absolutely. You get there and it's like, when are we starting? And uh, there's a lot of running around. The dude has to do, he has a pre-show uh, routine where it involves a lot of running around, a lot of a lot of uh, carrying on. And then eventually the show starts. That's, and there were a lot of people there. It was a full open house. How many people do you figure were there, Lauren? Like 100? Buck 20. What's that? At least Buck. 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really? it was it was busy. He would have been yeah, oh, yeah. He, he would have been frantic with 120 people there. It was it was chaotic. Yeah, uh, but he pulled it off. I mean, no, he, he always really, pulls, That's yeah. the, that's the magic of the dude. He always yeah. pulls it off. And it's like got, a switch. It's like a switch, Bernard. He, he hit that. I can see that in his eyes. Like there was like 10 minutes before the show. It's like, oh, he's pull. He's got this. Got this news anchor going now. All right, we're gonna see it. And then boom, the vision happens, and like it's just like. Okay, we're in the studio now. We're going. Let's roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it so, was a good show, too. It was a really good show. Yeah, I watched it because uh, two of my friends were on it. And, yeah. uh, who, who's that? Uh, who's on? Who's uh, that? My buddy Bernard from miniprints.com. If you ever order anything from miniprints.com, I'm telling you, you got to say, tell them Lionel sent you and see if that helps. I'll charge you double. Yeah. See, you can't do that. Or if you got to out, if you go to Otter Valley, if you buy something from Otter Valley, tell them Lionel sent you. Um, so how did you, Lauren, end up managing to sit at the desk? Because you were at the main, you were at the main table. You got, you were right there. You were there for the whole show. Pause for a second on that. So when I was showing off all the other exclusive, 
to a couple of Ken's um, guys like James, like and to Mike Buddy, and Mike was like, "Oh, the caboose," because he had seen it a few times when he had been through Kansas City, and Ken just got enamored with the fact that you know the family was there, Izzy was there, Izzy wore one of the "What's Neat This Week" hats, the yellow one. <laughs> she got a video and picture of it. There's a picture I got of of myself, Izzy, uh, Sugarfire, uh, James Regeer, Mike Buddy, George. Ken, all in one shot, all smiling, laughing. And that's what I mean. I mean, he's a really, he's a really easy guy to get to know, but he's got a creative mind. And when those creative juices get flowing, you just got to go with that, go with the flow. Just go with it no matter what. I'll let everybody in on a little industry secret. About once a, about once a month, the dude gives me a call. <laughs> and oftentimes it'll be 1130, 1230 at night. <laughs> And it's like, hey, Lionel, what are you doing? Well, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, my, I have my, I have him listed on my phone as the dude. So it's like my phone goes and I look at my phone. And it's like it's the dude calling. Oh my god. Um. So how did you manage to get? So you managed to get at the big table because of your family. So he interviewed. He met us all on Saturday. We did some pictures, and then he came back on, or on Friday. He came back on Saturday, did the interview with the family, which I believe will be either on the September or October Mono River Hobbyist. Uh, what's new this month in Mono River Hobbyist video segment, where he interviews myself, Sarah, and Izzy, and kind of gets to understand like our family business, our history, and our projects. And then right after that, he goes, "Can you come tonight?" And I'm like. Okay, I, I, I wanted to be very cautious because, you know, getting that request to come, I thought was a very much a sac- sacred privilege. And I didn't want to <laughs> ask. I didn't want to step out of, out of bounds because, you know what, it's it's a, it's his personal property. And if he'd like me there, then I would gladly come. And the second he comes over, and he goes, can you come tonight? And then Mike Buddy was like, come. And then Mike immediately texted me the address. And so at the end of the day, I'm talk, over talking to George and he's like, I'm going over to Ken's and I'm like, I got, I got the invite too. So after we had supper, uh, well, my wife and I and Izzy with, Ken, with uh, George, George and I went over to the dude's house. Bernard was there and then they were starting to do some preliminary um, group shots for both the two episodes of the September and October uh, Mono River Hobbyist uh, intro. And then he comes to me about 830. He goes, um, you're going to sit on here tonight. You're going to show your couple cars. And if you want to have a couple cars run on my layout, uh, talk to Daniel Combs, Coombs and Daniel, nice, super nice guy. I've talked to him a few times on, on Facebook messenger, but really nice, my nice mother, super friendly. And yeah, I ran the 6,400s around Ken's layout. They look good. I took some pictures. I know Bernard took some pictures and some video and, and I, my, I stumbled, hey, I stumbled my, into a home run, Lionel. I'll put it that way. I stumbled into a home <laughs> run, and I'll take that home run every day of the week. And Mike, are you, <laughs> uh, Mike, are you taking copious notes about all this? I'm just standing here in slack-jawed amazement. <laughs> I'm, I'm, t- I'm tired already. I, I didn't even go to this thing, and I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get an invite, Bernard? Um, I was hanging around with uh, Mike Buddy and James Regeer. And they said, are you going tonight? And I said, I don't know. Am I? And they said, come on along. And I'm like, well, I don't want to impose because it's it's very much exactly. And this is kind of what I was saying to you earlier. It, it's very much what Lauren said is you don't want to impose. And I certainly didn't want to sort of show up. But they said, you know, the same thing. Are you are you coming? And I'm like, I don't know. Am I? And so they said, come on along. And it really was very much I went just to sort of be part of the scene, to sort of, you know, hang out with Lauren and George and, you know, some of the other people that I knew would be there. Uh, I had no expectations of participating in any way, shape or form, you know, other than just being a fly on the wall. And then, you know, same sort of thing. Uh, Ken said, you know, I'm going to interview you. Go stand by the microphone over there. So I, I went over to the kiddies table and you know, and I got my 15 minutes of fame, so you, you it was two, very much appreciated. You two guys kind of monopolized the show, I thought. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, yeah, but... it's like it's a more, more, here's more of Bernard, here's more of Lauren. It was just well, nonstop. You know, we've got kids to feed, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in the words of Miley, we can't stop, we won't stop, Bernard, right? We can't stop, That's we right. won't stop. Yeah. Well, it's just too much fun. 
It is. Who would want? Who would want to stop? Hey, Bernard, I was looking at you the whole time. Like we're gonna make this happen. Look at no, me. No, you're we're looking at me this. the whole time, saying, "Take a picture. Take a picture." <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> did you Did you take a picture? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I took a picture. Yeah. I mean, there is, there was a little bit. I mean, I don't want to be a star blank, 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 but there was a little bit of a pinch me moment here because oh, yeah. I started watching, I started watching the What's Neat This show, I don't know, 10 years ago, you know, before I had a, a layout, certainly well before I was, you know, involved in this side of the industry. So, I mean, I was kind of more there, you know, wide eyed as, you know, like, I can't believe I'm actually you know, seeing this layout in person, you know, the layout that you see on, on the big screen, you know, there you are right in front of it. Yeah. So, it was like, a, it was like a Mount it was Rush. fun. It was a Mount yeah, Rushmore a moment f- for me, Lionel. It was a Mount Rushmore moment for me. Huh. Okay. Apparently, because apparently, no, being, I, apparently being on this show doesn't mean much to you guys at no, all, but no, you're the no, dude Lionel. Says, <laughs> and oh my <laughs> God, it's a Mount Rushmore moment. No, what this I mean is, is, this is more like <sighs> the, 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 the podcast is more like hitting a pothole moment for you okay. guys. No. no. <laughs> what did I tell you the first time I ever? I know on I'm the giving show? you the. Gift. And I said I was I, so happy to meet you and talk with you because you were one of my. I know. Growing I'm, up. Uh, I'm and kidding. Dude, oh, really? The dude was right there. No, seriously. I. I, I, I had. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Relax, I, will you? I, I said told... Lionel who? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what Bernard. <laughs> no, but I, I still who's, I still who's Lionel Strang? Who's that Strang boy I keep <laughs> yeah. hearing about? <laughs> my so okay, Lionel, you guys I still had have fun. your issues. Like I you... still have your magazine. Issues. I know I it Ken. relaxed. I still have Ken's issues, so that's what it meant to me. I understand that. And it is fun too because to Ken's credit, uh he does this he he he, he follows the golden rule of being a YouTuber or a podcaster, he's consistent. And when you're consistent, you start to build a following because people can rely on the on the show showing up at a particular time. And to Ken's credit, he's consistent. And he has a personality that's... It's, it's, he's the dude, for God's sakes. What else but you know you what else, Lionel? You know, you know what I discovered, sort of... And I see, I saw this on the air, but I didn't really get it until I was there in person. He's probably one of the most passionate people about oh, yeah. the hobby that I've mm. ever met. And one of the big things that I, I really actually found this quite impressive, his big thing when we were there is that he was finding um, model railroad couples and zeroing in on men and women, husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, okay. and modeled together. There and he go. had a number of people. If you watch the episode, you'll see that he interviews a number of couples. And his sort of big sort of theme of the night, I would say, was, you know, couples that do this together. And I thought that was a very inspiring message. I thought it was a really neat and original message. And I think that's actually happening more and more and more. The, the, oh, yeah. hobby, the hobby is becoming, is, is becoming mainstream. I don't think I'll live long enough to see it. But I think at some point, in the not too distant future, the uh, hobby will be very much more mainstream than it's ever been. Uh, because I was doing, uh, Uncle Dave and I were doing a show uh, not that long ago, and uh, you may have bumped Uncle Dave, actually. Wow. I might have, uh, uh, Uncle Dave might have been on some today, but you may have bumped him. We'll have to see what, how that goes. Um, uh oh. Yeah. You don't want to be cross. You don't cross Uncle Dave. He's a New Jersey guy. Do we need to make some phone calls? <laughs> do I need to bring out a model that Uncle Dave needs? He's a big, yeah, there you go. That's what you need to do. He's a, he's a big shot with a New Jersey Transit. You don't want to, he knows where the, he knows where to put the bodies. <laughs> no, wait, are you, are you going to pay off Uncle Dave so that we don't get in trouble here, Lauren? Uh, yeah, yeah. Would you, yeah, Lauren, make a car that he'd like. That would be right. You'd be right up his alley. What was maybe I talking on, Maybe on September 16th, there might be. Yeah. What was I ta- going to tell you guys? It was really good until I started talking. <laughs> <laughs> couples couples that do model training. oh yeah 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 but anyways yeah we were just talking about how the hobby is creating a much more of a camaraderie and people couples now are starting to do it more it's the hobby's growing like crazy absolutely growing well, like know, crazy you know what the interesting thing is it is mainstream in the uk because i was watching absolutely you know, there's like a there's a um like, you know, the reality TV shows we have over here, it's like you bake a cake or you, you know, you do something like that. Uh, there's a UK build a model railroad reality TV show. There were you, is it still going? I know it was kind of a, I didn't think it did that well. I thought for a lot, maybe it's still going. I don't know. 
I don't know. I I, I was. Checking I did it see out. it. You know, I did the, see it. Yeah. Yeah, within the last year or two. Absolutely. Yeah, and it'll yeah. it'll re- resurrect again in some other form. Uh, well, that's, that's when it hits TV. That's mainstream, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Uh, when it hits podcasting, it's that's when it's mainstream. Um, okay, so you guys go to his house. You have a great time. You're glad you <laughs> went. Lauren got to sit at the desk. Uh, the Bernard, big, you did, the big table. Yeah, yeah, at the big table. Lauren, Bernard, I watched your part. You did great. You spoke up. You were you you did great on it. Um, Thank you. So then, what happened? So is when is the when is the actual show? Is it Friday, Saturday? It was Saturday night. No, no, I mean was, uh, our, the RPM. When, what Friday, day? Saturday. Friday, Friday Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So, so after yeah. this, so after Saturday night, and you've been on the show, and everybody goes back to the hotel. The next day, you start out for home. Bright and early, yeah. And Hit what? The road. What did you do, Lauren? Like, did you come home on the Sunday, or what did you do? No, I took my wife to the Cardinals game on the Sunday. On the Sunday. All right, and then when? And who were they playing? They were playing the Chicago Cubs. And who won? The Cardinals. Oh, did you catch a ball or anything? No, I had to leave after the sixth because uh, we well, had to leave the... after the sixth. Yeah, heat stroke. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah, that's proper. That's a proper thing to do yeah. for sure. Absolutely, because yeah. it is. Yeah. It, when I uh, I go to a lot of uh, spring training games in Florida, mm-hmm. and I do not know how these people sit in the sun. I always buy tickets. I whatever stadium I go to. I, all the tickets I buy are in the shade. I and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching these people just get cooked. I yeah. mean, you, you late March and and uh, and uh, early late March in Florida. I mean, the sun is strong. There's not a cloud in the sky. I mean, these people are getting cooked. I don't know how they managed to do it, but yeah, you made, you made the right decision there. So, did you go home like on the Monday or? So we did a couple hour drive. Um... That night, and we stopped off at a place called Terra Hoot in Indiana. Terra Hot, Terra Hoot, Terra Hot, Terra, Terra, Terra Hoot, Terra Hoot. Yeah, uh, you know what that's famous for? Oh. No, I don't. Sprint car racing. Oh, yeah. There are many, and and uh, Indy car racing. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's one of the hotbeds of uh, racing in uh, in the mid the Midwest part okay. of the country. Yeah. Cool. Which is of absolutely no concern to us because it's a model railroad show, but it interests me. <laughs> That's your show. Yeah. <laughs> Coming soon on AML Network number two. Checkbox, <laughs> please. We hit today's checkbox. <laughs> so did you go? So you made it home on Tuesday then, or Monday? We made it Monday night. Okay. Uh, we finished the drive. Uh, we did a little bit of shopping in Port Huron. Picked up some stuff. And then uh, I went to customs. I learned how to handle myself for Springfield in January, which got a lot of stress off my plate. Now I know how to go both sides into the United States and back into Canada on paperwork. So that took a lot of stress out of my head for January for Springfield. And uh, we came home and uh, back to the grind on Tuesday. And uh, I came in after work and checked on my shop and checked on my girls. And they had it humming along great. And I was, you know, happy. Um. Yeah, like what what has changed? Because I know for it was a, it's been a sweat for you trying to figure out how to get product across the border. And is it really? Did you kind of finally figure it out? Is that what's happened or what? I have figured out the correct forms, the correct documents, the correct filings, the timelines, the requirements of of customs bonds, and then I also have the correct reimportation codes coming back into Canada, so that way I can get the exemption on not paying GSD again. Okay. So a bunch of stuff I really got cleaned up, and I just put my, I've been able to put my mind at ease post show. Good. So now you're all set for Springfield. Now you can explain it to uh, your buddy Bernard here, and then he can relax and he can take stuff with him. Yep. Yeah. Well, actually, um, what are you laughing at, Bernard? What's that's such a bad idea about that? It's not well, Bernard. It's not Bernard. Maybe I'll do it for you. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. I, I, I have it. You know, what? I'm thinking solely about Texas, which you know yep. is the show that is next or was next or has just been. So Springfield feels like it's a uh, a decade away, but I know it'll be on us in no time at all. Once you, right now, right now uh, Springfield is uh, just about five months from now. Wow! But, but Bernard, now 
there is no show till Springfield. There is no show in the United States other than Timonian, which you and I have talked about. And there yeah. is no show in Ontario or Western Canada. So Springfield is the next go show for us. It's the big one. And it, you know, once again, I'm sure we'll talk a lot about it between now and then, but being my first year ever last year, that was, I can't wait till it comes up again. Are you coming to our pizza party? Did you, did you didn't come to the pizza party last year, did you, Bernard? Yeah, of course. We oh, were all wearing you? our... He sat we were beside all wearing, me. Oh, okay, all right. Me. I forget. He sat there was... beside me, too. I know. We were I all said. wearing, coincidentally, we were all wearing the exact same goldenrod yellow shirt. That's right. There were right. about six of us. That's and right. That's right. We took a picture. That's right. There's a photograph to haunt Michelle Kempema. Yeah, Michelle yeah. is wearing the yellow, yeah. That's right. And while we're talking about Michelle Kempema, let's uh, give a shout out to our buddy Michelle Kempema, who has uh, been struggling along with the with the dreaded uh, C word. And uh, we are, we hope, Michelle, that you're 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 finally you're you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. That's what we're hoping. We're thinking of you and praying for you, Michelle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I know, uh, Mich- uh, <laughs> Michelle and I talk, have talked, that's for sure. Um, okay, um, so then, after that, so then Bernard starts heading home, and yes. and you go to, you start, your first night you stop where? Marion, Ohio, and oh, yeah. oh boy, am I glad I stopped there. Okay, why is that? Uh, well, first of all, it was a 12 hour drive and I don't have 12 hours in me. So it was the halfway mark, just past the halfway mark. Um, but I always wanted to go to Marion because Marion is one of those rail fan locations where there's a virtual rail cam that I'd watched before. And there are two sets of double diamonds. So it is an interesting rail fan location where there are two north south NS tracks that cross two east-west CSX tracks, and then to the west of there, there are another two north-south CSX tracks. So you have four tracks northbound, two tracks east-west, and a heck, of, a heck of a lot, oh, plus more yards and more industries than you can imagine, uh, including a fantastic uh, Union tank car, um, yeah. UTLX tank car facility and marion has a ton of railroad history uh and is a very very interesting spot to rail fan so that was that was a bucket list item for me how long how long did you spend watching trains there not nearly long enough and what i have realized is that on a trip like this where you're always sort of moving from a to b you don't do any one location justice so marion is definitely you know on my list of places i would like to go back and visit um i could have spent very easily uh an entire you know easily a day and i probably spent you know hours instead of days there uh because and i will seg i will interrupt myself a little bit here, but my next stop after Marion, uh, this would have been, so Sunday night was Marion. Monday, I was motoring uh, towards uh, the uh, Rob Bennett. The beautiful, Mike, beautiful Erie, Pennsylvania. Erie, Pennsylvania. It's just to pop in on Rob Bennett <coughs> and, and Mike's layout. But may I, may I interrupt myself with a brief story first? Or, okay. So I'm kind of, you know, I spent a little longer than I should have uh, at Marion, and I was very sort of conscious of the fact that, you know, I had, I think, a good four hours ahead of me. So I didn't want to arrive too late for these guys. You know, I told Rob that I would be there, you know, probably around 12, 1 o'clock. So how fast were you and, going when the police pulled you over? Well, I said Lionel, <laughs> I said Lionel sent me, and that got rid of them pretty quickly. Oh, okay. so, All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just they, mention well, my, they, yeah, just mention my name, yeah. You're very well known in those parts. Very well known. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know what? I got, I got a bit of kilometers to put on the car. I really have to pull myself away from Union Station and all this fantastic rail traffic. So I'm, I'm finally get myself pulled away from Union Station, and I'm motoring out of Marion towards Erie, and all of a sudden I see a track that is going into a kid's park. And it's going past a baseball diamond. I'm thinking that is the weirdest track I've ever seen. Because why would there be a spur 
leading to a baseball diamond. So I keep driving and I realize that I am driving beside one of the largest transload facilities I've ever seen. And as I'm sort of passing between the buildings, I'm getting a little taste of things that are looking quite interesting. And I, as I get to the turn in entrance, suddenly I see a locomotive and I'm like, okay, I don't have time for this. I shouldn't stop. I've just gotten on the road, but I pull in, I go to the gatehouse. I say, hi, my name's Bernard. I like trains. I'm from Canada. <laughs> can I just go over and take a picture of that locomotive? And I'm fully anticipating that this guy's going to be armed. You know, he's going to be pulling up the FBI database. He's going to be saying, you know, no admittance, turn around, get out of here. But of course he waves me through and says, knock yourself out. So I'm driving down this transload facility, which has about 10,000 feet of track. So which it's a good two, mi two miles. Which is in the middle of a baseball diamond. Uh, well, the spur is leading through the baseball diamond. Oh, we're past to the this facility. Oh, I see. We're yeah, past the baseball diamond. I'm just diamond. past the baseball diamond. <laughs> the, 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 the track through the baseball diamond was the first clue. What do you, so mean? What do you at, mean through the baseball diamond? Like right well, along? That's like a, yeah, like, like right along the side. Like there's this track going through this park to nowhere. And I'm like, well, that's the weirdest track I've ever seen. And so I keep driving and I get to this. Suddenly I realize I'm in the middle of nowhere and I get to this two mile long set of warehouses with this 10,000 foot, you know, track running along the side of it. And I spot this locomotive off in the distance. I talk my way in. I drive up to the locomotive. There is a pickup truck sitting in front of it. And I think, oh, great. Here's security. They're going to tell me to get lost. I get out of the car. Hi, my name is Bernard. I like trains. I'm from Canada. <laughs> you got to stop and saying I, that. <laughs> and I say, it's, you know, my sort of like, you know, I'm no threat. I'm just an idiot. Um, and I go up to the guy and I say, can I take a picture of your, and the locomotive well, wasn't SW. How, how many yeah. people are you going to ask? Quit asking. The first guy said, you knock yourself out. Stop well, asking Well, these are people. the guys sitting right in front of it. Well, I'm glad I did ask <laughs> because it was the engineer and the conductor. The locomotive was an SW 1500, which is my all time 100% favorite locomotive. I love switchers. I love SW 1500s. I say to the guy, Okay, if I take a picture of your locomotive, he says, yeah, no problem. He says, you want to hop on? And I'm like, do I? So I'm clambering all over the locomotive. I'm sitting in it, and he says, I've got some switching to do. Do you want to ride along? And I'm like, oh. I'm like an eight-year-old boy at this point. So I'm hanging out with him in the SW 1500, playing with everything that I shouldn't be playing with. And we are switching, get this, boxcars filled with beer. So I spent a good hour with him in the cab of the SW 1500 working the transload facility and we were moving loaded boxcars filled with Modelo and Corona uh, in and out of a Constellation uh, brand's warehouse. And where is this in relation to Marion? This is right outside. It's a place called Marion Industrial Rail Park. I've got video of it up on my YouTube page. I'm sure you and it do. Was absolutely spectacular. Uh, the the guy Gary was the uh, the engineer and Lance was his conductor. Uh, gave me the deluxe VIP tour, uh, and it was the absolute highlight of my trip. Was was riding along with these guys well, no and, kidding. And, <laughs> and playing and literally I was switching one to one scale. I was prototypical switching. I felt like I was on the world's largest model railroad layout. Yeah, there's like uh, I'm founded on uh, on Google Earth, and it's like there's like one, two, three, four, five, six. There's like eight diamonds there, and there's how did you get way, like where like this is nowhere near a freeway. How did you get way over? How did you end up way over there? In Marion or at the Marion Industrial Center? Yeah, beside the baseball diamonds. What per, like you must have been on Highway 309. What what why were why were you on Highway 309? Well, because I have this amazing app uh, that is called Waze, and I was hanging out at Union Station in Marion, which is where you can see all those those diamonds, and I plugged in uh, Rob Bennett's address, and it, it took me past the River Valley Baseball for Youth Complex, where I saw the track, and I think I was actually on, uh, what road was I on there? Harding, Harding Avenue, Harding Highway East. 
Yeah, something like that. And then you see that if you just pass the uh, pass the uh, diamond there, you're at the uh, the Transload facility, uh, Marion Intermodal. And this Marion Industrial Center is a Transload facility. Uh, Boise Cascades were there. They had uh, they had every kind of freight car you could imagine. Uh, they had a full intermodal yard. Uh, they have auto rack unloading. Uh, they have a beautiful Santa Fe. Uh, I think it's a Jeep 40-2, a GP 40-2. Uh, and then this SW 1500. And I was like running around this facility like, you know, <laughs> like, like I'm it was my own. I'm Bernard, I'm Bernard and I like cranes. I'm Katie and I, and yeah. I like cranes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And there is, there's, there's a lot of video on my uh, YouTube uh, channel if people want to see what eight-year-old Bernard looks like in the cab of an SW 1500. Who's that guy in the yard? It's just a Canuck running around with a camera. We're good. Keep switching. Oh my God. So yeah. where would I find these photos of this uh, particular locomotive? Um, it is up on my, uh, well, on my Facebook page, there's lots of pictures of it. So if you go per, to your personal one or mini prints, mini prints, facebook.com slash mini prints. Okay. And I tried to document, uh, mini facebook.com slash mini prints 3d. I tried to document as much of my trip as possible. There's lots of drone footage because I brought the drone with me. Uh, and you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six posts down below the uh, 2695 kilometer sign under the picture of, I did six states in six days and drove 1,675 miles. And right below that, you'll see a picture of the Marion Industrial Center SW 1500 and me in the cab of it with the conductor and the, oh, with the engineer. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the is SW it, 1500. Is it, is it yellow? Uh, no, it's uh, 9551. It's green and blue. Oh, okay. All right. I'll find it here. I'm looking at your pictures. Yeah. I see you drinking. Yeah. I see there's one of you drinking beer. There's one of me drinking beer. And, uh, there's a picture of the, the Marion okay. crossing. And, um, there's a picture of Lauren there on what's neat this week. Uh, that was, uh, that was from the 20, no, that was from the 31st. Why is, so there, the always, why is there always pictures of you drinking beer? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, when I'm not switching boxcars filled with beer, I like to, to drink beer. Now is there, uh, oh, there's the picture of you in the, the engineer standing. Yeah. Okay. Now, did you take just a picture of the locomotive? I'll have to take pictures. I'll have to. No, play. no, no, no. That there's, why, there's... why didn't you do that? What do you mean? I took pictures. I took video. I took tons of stuff. Okay, but there's not one just a picture of the locomotive by you know, itself. Yes. Oh, it is served. there? Okay. Well, you'll have to yeah. send that to me. I will send we'll it. To we'll you. use that for the cover photo. All right. You don't want my smiling face in well, front of it. You're you're on the cover photo quite a bit. There's one. In, I don't yeah, want to get anybody true. in trouble. All right. Let me just. Get yeah, that's something you. you're always concerned about getting people in trouble. Although, well, you know, I asked these guys. I asked these guys. I said, <laughs> "Are you sure?" I said, "Are you sure?" You know, am, am I allowed I'm, to do this? I'm Bernard, and I like trains. <laughs> I'm Bernard. I'm from Canada, and I like trains. And uh, I said, "Like, are you sure I'm allowed to do this?" They're like, "Oh yeah, no problem." <laughs> They're probably happy for the company. I, I'm sure it was, and it's it's really fun. And this was on Monday. This was on Monday, and at this point, I'm thinking, oh, God. I mean, I, he said, do you want to keep switching? Because he, he had the whole switch list, and we switched the beer. I said, I got to go. I said, I'd love to. I said, I could spend all day here with you, but I, uh, I did not want to leave uh, Rob so, and Mike. So, Mike, when he got to your place, did he, did he knock on the door, and you opened the door, and he goes, I'm Bernard. I'm Canadian, and I like trains. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Just so you know, Mike, us Canadians, we don't act like we're on the Red Green Show where they're doing the lodge thing. Hi, my name my name's Lauren James, and I like model trains. My Appar wife thinks I'm crazy. Apparently, Hi, Lauren. Yeah. Apparently, we do do that. I know. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. I want you two guys, Mike and uh, – so, did you go to Rob Bennett's place first, or did you go to Mike's? I did. Yeah. Or you went there first? Yeah, I went there first. Because Mike, and Mike actually... left explicit instructions to go to his house first. 
Oh, he did. Oh, I didn't get that memo. Uh, uh, Bernard's phone didn't work. He could. He tried to call me, and he didn't come through the landline. Why so. can't you, uh, Lauren? Does your know. phone? Does your phone? Lauren, does your phone work in the states? I bought a BlackBerry. It don't work anywhere. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what is it with you two? <laughs> you have a BlackBerry? Yeah. We already established that. Lionel took a picture of the last time I was the, at the Re- Rapido event. Uh, uh, your fast track to model railroading fun. Rapido trains your fast track to model railroading fun. And uh, Lionel took a picture of it and did a, uh, the live on the uh, fans page. And like, look, Laura still got a BlackBerry. Yeah, we got to be the last one in existence. I know. And so we got to get rid of that. Um, So Rob Bennett falls into a similar category to uh, the dude because Rob started his YouTube channel well over 10 years ago. And I was watching his channel. So hang, hang on a minute. Rob Bennett is like the dude. In as much as he <laughs> I've been watching him on YouTube for years and okay. it's always been one of the dream layouts that inspired me okay and how do, so mike what is the youtube channel it's a it's very it's very tricky to find this youtube channel yeah it, it used to be his sons i think it's stephen bennett family model railroad or something like that stephen bennett stephen bennett yeah, yeah. i just yeah. typed in stephen bennett and it came up all right yeah stephen bennett was well, and why doesn't rob change it to rob bennett just because his son started it and that's it well, I think they had so much uh, material on the YouTube channel, and you can't change the name of it. YouTube right, won't let right. you, stuff like that. So he just left it. Okay. That's the way it was. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So the, between the two of you, 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 need, you guys need to describe to me what this, uh, because basically, Bernard, you said to me it was absolutely, Rob. Uh, Rob's layout is fantastic. I've always admired it, and it's always been an inspiration for me, because I think more than anyone uh, Rob does scenery and he was doing scenery, uh, long before. I mean, the first time I think I ever saw Martin Welberg scenery products, which is, he's a fantastic European manufacturer. Uh, He's handled by some of the big distributors now, but years and years ago, you know, when no one had ever heard of him, uh, Rob was importing his stuff and Rob seems to find a lot of really interesting scenery products from Europe that no one's ever heard of. And he really, I think, is an innovator when it comes to scenery and probably does it better than anyone else I've ever seen. Really? Wow, that's oh, high yeah. praise. That's high praise. Yeah, oh. Rob is a he's a he's a true artist. I mean, I he is. You know, I, I think he'd embarrass he'd be embarrassed if you said it to his face, but he is he is very, very, very good. I, I think he, he got hooked on the some of this European stuff. He was in the Air Force Reserve, and I think he might have actually seen that stuff in Germany or Europe when he was over there doing reserve stuff i think don't quote me on that and i think that's how he got into it and realized what it was and started bringing it back and then found sources for it in the in the united states it's certainly the first time i'd seen some of the products he used on his channel and you know we're talking easily you know more than five possibly 10 years ago yeah yeah okay and so uh how big is this layer huge basement size i mean it, it goes on and on and on and uh, and for a stretch there, uh, Rob had a uh, a doc that Rob had a really serious uh, health problem. Yeah, he did actually twice. It, it came back. Oh, did and, it come uh, back? I didn't realize. Yeah, that. yeah, he had an issue, and then he got it cleared up, and then out of the blue, it came back again, and he had trouble with his his eye. I know he's been going to the Cleveland Clinic for that. I think he still has trouble seeing out of that eye. So he's actually he's accomplishing. Not only is he an excellent modeler, now he's doing it with basically one eye, which is amazing <laughs> in and of itself. And if you see his layout, you know, if you had multiple eyes, multiple hands and all the time in the world, I, I still would find it amazing to 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 achieve what he's achieved. And do you yeah, well, he's, and he's and he's so fast. I mean, he just works so so darn fast, it's just infuriating. I mean, think of this think of this layout as honestly. Uh, it's certainly magazine worthy. I don't know if it's been in the magazines, but it would be right up there with some of the best magazine layouts you've ever seen. That's the thing about this hobby that just is becoming. When we were in Rochelle, we end up going to a fellow named Mike McBride, who's like in Dixon, Illinois, like it's 100 miles west of the, uh, Chicago. You know, rail, uh, r- uh, train tracks and cornfields is what's out there. And we go into this guy's house. 
And it was one of the best layouts I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was just the way the carpentry and the finish and fit of this layout was unbelievable. And I'm just like my mouth. And it's like, I kept saying to the guys all weekend, this is exactly what I talk about on the podcast all the time. There's these layouts are all over the place. And these people that you've never heard of, like you say, I don't think Rob, uh, uh, Mike, do you know if Rob's ever been in one of the magazines or? I, I think he collaborated uh, with an article, I think it might have been RMC, eh, maybe two years ago now. About he has a uh, uh, a gate to get into the main part of his layout, and I th- think he and the fellow that helped helped him build that wrote that up. And I think it was an RMC, but the layout itself has never been in the magazine or anything, as far as I know. Wow. And it, it really should be. I've did an hour. I got about an hour of footage that I've got to edit and put <laughs> an on. Hour. Oh really? yeah. Oh Jeez. yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll chop it down, you know, I'll probably chop it down to a good 15 minute segment, but I, I, did you use the drone to get the footage? You know what? (laughs) I should have, I should have. Cause yeah. Um, I, I asked permission. I said, hi, I'm Canadian. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But no, Rob was very gracious. He took me on a full tour and um, I do a little monthly uh, live every month. So the first Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, I go on Facebook and YouTube. And I have a little segment called Meet the Modeler. And Rob very graciously agreed to be my Meet the Modeler for, uh, I don't know whether we'll do it in September or October. But uh, I'll feature some of his, his layout. Because in addition to everything else, Rob is, of course, a Mini Prince customer. And when I walked into his layout, the first thing that greeted me was uh, a few mini print figures. So I'm sure he just stuck them there for when I <laughs> when I walked in. But it, it was lovely to see his layout and to see mini prints on his layout. So was he? So it sounds like when you contacted him, he was very amenable to having you stop by. He was yes. I I called him up and I said hi. You know, I've been a huge fan of yours. I will be motoring past uh, your your layout on. Monday, you know, and this was all arranged in advance. I said, you know, is there any chance I could pop in for a quick visit? And he said, absolutely, which was very gracious. And and it really was a dream come true. I mean, this was one of the layouts that I really, really wanted to see in person. And it, it did not disappoint. You're, you're it was YouTube, actually better. You're a YouTube guy. Like, you watch a lot of YouTube, don't you? Like the, When you, I'm working, yeah. When, when you, the only way you would have known of this layout is to watch it on YouTube. Yes. And um, I got a lot of inspiration. Uh, So when I was starting out early, you know, when I was building my basement layout, I watched a lot of people for inspiration. But when I'm working away on on 3D printing, you know, it usually is playing in the background. I'm one of the rare people, Lionel, that actually listens to you every AML episode. I just have it on in the background through YouTube. It's a good thing that we started that channel. It is. It makes it very easy to listen. It's, uh, we got eleven hundred subscribers on our YouTube channel, and I didn't even want a channel. But wow. I was, I was told, I was told emphatically that I had, I should have a YouTube channel because some people will listen to it on YouTube. And it turns out, right now, Bernard is listening to himself via YouTube on this podcast. Hi, Bernard. You're Canadian, and you like trains. <laughs> <laughs> don't that ask Bernard. Don't answer. It's on YouTube. Don't answer right now. Just carry on with whatever you're doing. Don't answer. you. I'm not there. This is just on YouTube. I'm sure I'm just nodding along. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So then uh, that's unusual. That's odd because when I, uh, when I tried to arrange uh, uh, a visit with Mike, he was like, he was quite perturbed that I'd already given you his cell number. Well, Mike was upset. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, most people are upset when you call them. Um, I, now, you can verify this. Mike always says it's like a, a seven iron from his house to Rob's house. Is it, is, are they pretty close together? Yeah, I'd say they're not too far. I mean, you'd have to have a pretty good swing. But, right. Uh, I would say they're definitely, compared to the amount of driving I had done over the past two days, I would say it's a hop, skip, or a jump. Okay. There you go. There you go. And uh, so, okay. So after you left Rob's, you finally, you, you took an hour's worth of video and you set off for uh, 
Mike's place. Mike's place. Yeah, I followed uh, Rob. Rob's got a great sports car, and he led the way. Oh, and okay. So I... Rob, Rob went over with you. Oh yeah, no, he he led the way. Yeah, he said, "Follow me." All right. We're going we, over to Mike's we, house. we have absolutely, Mike. We have absolutely. It's going to be your job going forward to help me get uh, Rob on this podcast. Okay. But, All right. I've I've told him a couple times. That, part, uh, partly because you know, there's so many people to talk to. So it's not that I don't want Rob on the podcast. It's just like there's a million people to talk to. And it just seems to, it's a, it's a full-time job. Right now, we're, as this is being recorded and the time this is being recorded, we're in the middle of a, like a 52,000 part epi- uh, trilogy of Ken McQuarrie's layout. Ken turned out to be, you never know when you go to interview some people. And uh, Ken turned out to be just a great guy and, and loves to talk all about his layout. We've done three episodes, and there may be another seven yet to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ken Burns miniseries. Epilogue, epilogue. Yeah, yeah. Ken, yeah Ken McQuarrie's layout is massive, just massive. And, and he's got, Ken McQuarrie, main, his HO scale main line on his layout is literally a, a full-size, one-to-one, quarter-mile long. Wow. Ooh. A quarter of a mile. <laughs> it's not crazy. in HS scale, but in actual. In, in actual. actual. Yeah. yeah, it's like really? fourteen hundred it's like fourteen hundred feet. I think I just had a stroke when you described that, and I also tried to figure out how I could pull that off. I just had a stroke and thought about it at the same time in the same motion, Lionel. There you go. How come Lauren. you did, how come you didn't go to Rob Bennett's? Uh, I thought you guys were all in the same car. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Can you imagine Izzy and I with a fart gun in the back seat, Lauren? Oh my God, that would have been. She would have been asking, "Could you scan me in this pose? Could yeah, you yeah, scan really. me in that, that pose?" Oh Izzy did God. ask to be scanned about ten times. She's already been scanned. She she's she's come and gone. She knows that. Um. <laughs> oh, we got to bre- Okay, let's. We got to wrap up here. We're running out of. We're net. Well, I, I got. I got to tell me, you. When got- uh, hang on. I'm. It's still my right. show. It's still my show. So we want to talk about visiting Mike's. So I want you to exactly. describe to me what Mike's layout is like because I have this funny feeling it's pretty spectacular as well. It is. And the first thing that was greeting that greeted me when I got to Mike's uh, were two fantastic dogs. Oh, those bandits. I don't know if I use the word fantastic, but okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, they, they were, they were very friendly. What, what breed were they? Oh, those are uh, uh, um, soft coated Wheatons. Wheatons. That's yeah. right. Why do you keep know. using past tense? Is there something, something happened? Oh, no. no, no, but this is, we're describing. <laughs> you you a said what, that what breed were they? Like, uh, like well, okay, sorry. <laughs> Referring to when we saw them in the past. They are, oh, I, I suppose they're still Wheatons, but at the moment of time that we saw them. Uh, what breed yeah. are they, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, so yeah. a couple uh, of dogs met you. Okay. Fantastic dogs. And you, yeah. said to, and you said to the dogs, hi, I'm Bernard. I'm Canadian and I like trains. Yeah, and I like dogs, so I'd, I'd been yeah. missing my dog. So you know, it's nice to nice to see some furry noses. And we go downstairs, and it, it's it's another really impressive basement sized layout. Uh, and uh, Rob is sort of I call it proto freelance in as much as it looks like you're really somewhere, but it's it's a whole bunch of different spots. Whereas Mike, you're very much anchored in a very specific spot prototypical a very distinct time you know it was it was very interesting to see the black and white photographs and the prototypical photographs you you'll do a better job describing your sort of date and time and yeah mike let's just for to remind everybody what what exactly are you modeling Uh, oh well it's a little short line in central pa um era is late 30s um the susquehanna new york railroad which nobody's ever heard of um, and it was torn up in 1942, so it's gone. And uh, so I focus very tightly on modeling that as best as I can with, you know, the appropriate compromises for operational interest and, and that sort of thing. So, um, it's But a, you it's really, a you get the sense that you're right there. I mean, it's pretty prototypical and there's a really neat grade. I really appreciated uh, the grades of your layout because it looks like it would be a lot of fun to operate. Well, everybody wants to come back. That's for sure. Um, open invitation to you if you want to come and 
joint op, op session. I think we've had 38 or 40, I think, over the past eight years or so. So really, the concept has, has has worked. Um, so yeah, no, you're very kind. I, I appreciate that, especially after coming from Rob's layout, <laughs> which is a work of art. Well, you, <laughs> so, yeah, but I yeah. get the feeling, I get the feeling, Bernard, that Mike's layout isn't too far behind Rob's. He's very humble about it, but I got a feeling that you saw two pretty spectacular layouts. Absolutely. And, and that's, it's, I mean, these, these trips are so much fun because you've got the, the camaraderie, you've got, you know, all the industry scuttlebutt that Lauren was talking about, you know, meeting people and talking about what's new and, you know, sort of, it's good to be, you know, at the party and, you know, hear about who's coming out and doing what you've got the rail fanning, which, you know, come on, you know, yeah. it's, it's like nothing. And, and it's so different in the States compared to Canada. It really is. There's <laughs> so much more rail infrastructure, you know, you know, everywhere there's a rail park or a rail museum or a viewing platform or, well, you know, the, the, yeah. Living in Canada is like living in a loft above a really cool party. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's a perfect, perfect way of describing it. Uh, and then, and then the cherry on top is then you get to see all these incredible, inspiring layouts. You yeah, know, meet meet these amazing people, and I mean, oh, it's just it's overwhelming. It really is. Um, is, is there are there any other layouts in the Erie area, or like what's how is model railroading doing in the Erie area, Mike? Uh it's pr it's pretty pretty good. I mean, given the size that's here, um, um, I, our Rob and my buddy Brad White, he just moved out. A little further beyond me towards Ohio, the Ohio border, maybe another five miles. He's building a multi-deck layout based on the Chautauqua branch of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So that'll be pretty spectacular when he gets further along with that. Uh, a stone's throw from Brad's house out there, uh, not far from our farm property, actually, is another fellow named Ray Brown. He's building a multi-deck layout based on the uh, Vesper and Lake Erie. He's a he's a Bessie fan. That's going to be a spectacular layout when he gets it going. Uh, Another friend, Dale Desser, he's got a layout in Erie that we operate on all the time. Actually, there's an op session tomorrow night we're going to. Um, so, yeah, there's some really nice layouts in existence or under construction that are going to be really nice when they're when they're further along. So it is a, a small hotbed of of good stuff happening here, model but, railroad wise. But, Mike, factor in that you have the General Electric plant Erie, you had 19th Street in Erie, which was – one of the, my most favorite spots as a kid to go rail fan. I did that twice before the tracks were ripped up. You got Northeast, which is a rail cam and has the museum there. And you have Silver Creek, which was notorious for the 80s, 90s, and up until the 2000s for people camping weekends there, rail fan. I mean, that whole south side lake here, it is a rail fanning hotbed. So I bet you there's more mothers that just are more connected on the rail fanning side too. Cause I know that was a hotbed for when I was a kid to go that area to rail fan all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on. And, uh, we have a, our division has a, a picnic every year at the, the rail fan park in Westfield there, uh, between the NS and CSX main lines. And, um, there are people there all the time that we don't even know, you know, and, and kids, you know, that they, I say kids, but you know, guys in their twenties and stuff that are all focused on YouTube and all that social media stuff, um, that, you know, we're, we're trying to mix with them. So to bring them into the fold and, and get to know them. But uh, yeah, uh, at Brad White, my, my friend here, he's lived here his whole life. He said, there's a lot of closet model railroaders in, in Erie. And unfortunately you don't figure out who they are until the estate sale. But um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot, lot going on kind of under the surface. If you, if you, yeah, that's, that's the whole hobby. I mean, that's been the hobby forever, but that, that's the cover, you know, the, the, the curtain is being pulled back on that. People are, being found and being part of it all the time. The hobby is not stuffy anymore because of all the social media. I've there said this go. before and, and I'll say it again. We are becoming a hobby that is more mainstream, that is not nearly looked down upon. It's looked up and it's not near as stuffy and starchy as it once was. I love that. That's an excellent yeah. analogy. I love that. Well, well done. Good. Yeah. Well done, young fella. Lauren, <laughs> I, I, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, I was talking again. I was talking about you today to somebody, and I, I often refer to you as I say, you know, there's this kid that has his own store in Tilsonburg, blah blah blah, and I refer to you many a time by mistake as this kid, and and then I always think to myself, then I always say, well, he's in his mid thirties, and the person I was talking to said, well, how old's your son? And I said, well, he's thirty seven. He said, well, he's your kid. That's why you referred to Lauren as this kid. <laughs> 
So is that okay with you, Lauren, if I refer to you once in a while as this kid? I will always be one of the youngest people in the room, but I always feel that I can give a wealth of experience and, and time. And I, I, I've been in the hobby since I was six. Yeah, you won't you won't be one of the youngest people in the room for for long. There's too many <laughs> twenty. There's too many people in their twenties uh, uh, doing it. But uh, do me a favor. Don't ever go up to anybody and say. I'm born, I'm Canadian, and I like trains. <laughs> <laughs> no, right now it's I'm Lauren, and do you have, do you need any trash cars? That's my go-to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even Canadian. If I can get a cab ride out of it, I'm going to use that line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Can you uh, shut that car? I need a video of that car. Why is that? Oh, I made that car. Okay, we'll shut that car for you today. Hey, I like your, uh, you sent me a picture here, Lauren, of your table. I like your table where, uh, where you get the proper tablecloth going and everything. Where'd you get your tablecloth? Vista print. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah. That, that makes it, uh, makes it look like such a professional setup, eh? Um, big news. That's, to... the, that's a happy picture I sent you, Lionel. I'm so happy with my daughter sitting beside me. I know. I, I, it's I a, know. Just a ha- it's a happy moment for me. You are me. just, uh, you are just, uh, you really love your kid, eh? She's the world to me. Would you like enough? Would you like her to have a brother? Like, would you like? Can I give you? Can I send you my kid? I got would, a would kid. You like, would you like to buy two dogs? Yeah, <laughs> I, I have a Bob. That's more than enough work. All right. Okay. So they the, are the they are the most photogenic family in model railroading. There you go. Wow, nice. Um, and you weren't too far from the Fenero and Camalingo booth. So where in this picture? Where is uh? In relation to, or where is uh, Bernard? Out of the frame in the top right corner. Top right corner. I was up against the wall. Okay. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, the scanner takes a bit of space. So I, yeah. I requested a space away from the, the hustle bustle, sort of where I could sure. spin people around without getting in the way of things. All He's right. on the other side of the divider. All right. In the time we have left, let's talk about uh, Lauren's... Uh, uh, big deal on uh, September the 16th, just five days from now, OVR, yes. uh, Otter Valley Trains, which is the Otter Valley Railway, yep. Railroad, Otter Valley Railroad, which is, Railroad. In, which is in Tilsonburg, Ontario. Tilsonburg. My back still aches when, when I hear, I hear that, that word. word. Um, Mike? Yes, sir. Uh, being only 30 miles or less than, th- you're about 30 miles from Canada, probably 35 maybe because you're inland a bit. Um, do you know who Stompin' Tom Connors is? Uh, I've heard of him from the podcast. He uh, sang that song about Tilsenberg, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think your assignment between now and the next time you're on the podcast is to find out more about uh, Stompin' Tom Connors. Because you're basically uh, you're basically Canadian, anyways. Because you're bar- you're yeah. barely you're only like thirty five miles from us. Yeah, I've, I've been called a lot of things in my life, and but never basically <laughs> Canadian before. <laughs> well, yeah. What was this thing too? Uh, Bernard says to me. Uh, uh, Mike says, this is the first time I've ever had a foreigner in my house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are, we are I, no I, longer I, referred to as the brother of the North. We're considered the foreigner. That's yeah. was, really going down low now. I was an alien. <laughs> yeah. It, well, you know, he, he had, he had a long drive ahead of him and he wanted to use the washroom. And I said, yeah, sure. It's, you know, I showed him where it is. I said, you know, I, I think you're the first foreigner ever to use our bathroom. <laughs> so, so the reason why that probably happened, Lionel you didn't give Mike the burner phone and Interpol tapped his lines looking for you. That's exactly what happened. Uh, probably a, a foreigner. <laughs> we're not foreigners. We're Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> we're like your, we're like your cousin. You don't invite to the party. We just there show you up. Go. There you go. Perfect. All right. So let's uh, briefly talk about this. Uh, the big event that's just five days away. What's happening? So it's the third annual Otter Valley Railroad Manufacturers pop-up event. We have 15 different companies, uh, associations, book writers, and groups there. Um, Some of the highlights are Rapido Trains. Your fast track to model railroad fun. If it's L, if it's H-O, the fast track is Rapido. We have Aurora Miniatures. We have Intermountain Model Railway Company. We have Sylvan Scale Models. We have ITLA. We have Bernard, the Canadian, from many prints, he'll be there <laughs> scanning and talking with customers. I like trains. Have... <laughs> I know, I know, I know you do, Bernard. I know you do. Uh, we will have Atlas's tentative. We have Bowser. 
We have ESU. Soundtracks is tentative. We have NMRA Canada will be there. We have and the AML will have their table and stuff there. And hopefully we'll have AML Canada swag there. We'll talk later, Lionel. Okay. Um, I have, do, I have, have a, do I have a table there? You have whatever you need. Okay. Uh, George Duca will be there signing his recent book and talking with people. Oh, I want to um, interview him. That's handy. That's good. And we will have two others, and we're likely going to have a, a bring and brag table where you show off any recent models you worked on. Ooh, and we're going to, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going all in. I'm pushing all the chips in. Are you going to have polka music? I have the polka king, wow. Walter Osnack. I <laughs> have uh, popcorn and face painting for the kids. I'm going to have OBR announcements that day. That's right. More freight cars. Really? What, about, that day. what about hot dogs? Are we going to yeah. get hot dogs? Hot dogs. Uh, the people that are part of the vendor manufacturing side, we're going to have lunch provided for them. Oh, okay. Yes. Dietary constrictions. Look at your form, Bernard. Oh. Was there for, or is, I haven't looked at my form. Yes, it's it's in your email. On, I know, I, emailed, I know. I, I, I saw the email. I, saw I sent you a nice formal package, didn't oh, I? Oh, I saw that, yeah. But I was too busy looking at the All-Star, NHL All-Star ticket things to be. So, all right. Fair, me, fa- fair enough, fair enough. Um, let me see um, here. Right, where is it now? I see it. Let's see. I'm I'm looking. I'm looking. Keep talking and I'll keep looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking so, too. We're going to have that. The girls have changed up the store. It's a different style. They are working on scenerying the layout in store. And I'm working on two more surprises, which I hope I will tease a day or two before the event. This is going to be the biggest manufacturer event in Canada and likely that we've ever had in the country. And I encourage everybody who is within an eight-hour drive to come. And we're also possibly having a second day of meet and greet and clinic of the of the manufacturers that are that are holdover until Monday. Oh, so really? There'll be, there'll be more details. There is more to come, Bernard. I like I said, I have pushed all the chips in on this event. So should I be um, hanging out and sticking around? Well, I could always find something at Casa de Lauren. Well, we we should talk because yeah. um, you took us rail fanning last year, and we looked at what was that beautiful locomotive just around the corner from you? The Geo Rail. Oh. That was sweet. So there's there's some more rail fanning. There's some other stuff that I've got up my sleeve. So there, this is, I, I will say this, my girls are excited. My staff are excited. My wife is excited every day to push forward with this. Um, we also have a couple of 20th anniversary announcements we're going to make that day because it's gonna we're going to recognize our 20th anniversary of being in business. Um, so there'll be a, a family presentation of myself, Sarah, Izzy, and my family attending. Um, there's also going to be a donation that day for the Canadian Cancer Society from the proceeds from printing Isabel last year. And we're possibly announcing our next uh, fundraising kickoff. So it's everything wow. you can think of and more. And the cannon. The cannon is still coming. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry Lionel I wasn't going to forget that cannon <laughs> what is this if you require assistance with customs or items needed for the show let us know in advance and we can make a special trip to Port Huron for you so you're yeah, going to you're going to drive all the way the to Port Huron for somebody that wants to bring their stuff over no any of the manufacturers that need bonding or clearance I'll do it for them and why import well, like Buffalo is a lot closer that's where my that's where my pickup address is. Oh, okay. And how how long yeah. does it take you to get to Port Huron? An hour and forty. How long does it take you to get to Buffalo? Two twenty. Really? Yeah. Well, it takes you longer to get to Buffalo. If I go from Tilsonburg, yes. If I go from Simcoe, no. Tilsonburg, Tilsonburg. My back still <laughs> likes when I hear that word. He says you want to work in the tobacco fields of Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg. My back still aches when I hear that word. That sounds like a lot of driving. Maybe we should revisit this uh, smuggling across Lake Erie thing. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm thinking. I'm thinking hovercraft, hovercraft. Well, and not only (laughs) that. Shirt running, shirt running, shirt running. No, not only that. It turns out uh, we have a per. Mike has uh, 250 acres just outside of Erie. We could bury We could bury all this stuff. In the ground, and Mike, you know, we could bury it all in the ground, and and then whenever we need it, we'll just dig it up and like we yeah, don't, you know, he's got to have outbuildings, though. 
Do we have to bury it? Can't we just stick well, it in the barn? Yeah, no, I don't got you, no outbuildings. Don't you have, no a, hay, outbuildings. Don't you have a hay loft where we can just put inside the hay bales? Come on now. No, I like I like the idea. I like the idea of burying it in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> that seems much more dramatic to me. I have so di- the, I have dietary needs. So the flavor of this show <laughs> is apparently that's of no importance. <laughs> <laughs> Although he did stick with the food theme, so he did go to dietary. <laughs> yeah. So the, some of the flavor of the show is some of the manufacturers will be showing off their their recent samples, and any Canadian samples or any northeastern samples they have coming out will all be showed too. So whether it's uh, Rapido Trains, your fast track to model railroad fun. Rapido Trains, your fast track to model. And their upcoming release of the RS-18U, which will have the Ontario Southland, all those versions there, whether it's Atlas, um, whether it's Bowser with their upcoming RS-3s, and whether it's Aurora and upcoming freight cars that Ben has coming out, Sylvan Claire will have new vehicles that he'll be unveiling that day and new boats. Uh, Nick and Renee will be there with more new upcoming ITLA stuff. Bernard will be scanning, plus his new figurines, if he's working on, will have on display. Well, and I might have a... A couple of surprises up my sleeve as well too, like, that we can talk about. This, this, this is the marquee event for the country, and this is the signature. This is the signature event that puts our mom and pop business not just on a local scale, not just on a regional scale, but on a national and a global scale. Global. Have you? Can I? Can I throw a question in? No, um, I'm sorry. We last, don't have time. We don't have no? time. No. All right. Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, last year, you had a uh, YouTube pop-up event. You had some people there. Are you thinking of getting... Uh, They're coming. Our, they are? Good. So we'll four, see... Four, four, 50 plus. Oh, fantastic. What, what is it with you YouTube people that you always got to... We gotta, love it. We love. It's all about the community, Lionel. It is all about the community. That's why I think I'm going to start becoming like a podcast snob and every time I'm going to go... <laughs> You, you YouTube people. <laughs> okay, doesn't, you can make doesn't, it... doesn't Bernard listen to you on YouTube there, Lionel? Yeah, like you YouTube people. <laughs> you, you're not happy enough just to hear yourself. you got to see yourself as well. I listen to you on YouTube too. That's my preferred medium because a lot of my family will listen to the shows on YouTube and put it on their on their stream list. You're, a lot of your who, what? Whenever I'm on the podcast, I'll oh, share them with some okay. of my relatives. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even Uncle Larry does. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve. Uncle um, Hank from Kentucky's listened a few times. Oh, there you go, Uncle Hank. Way to go! Hey, Uncle Hank, how are you doing? Uh, yeah. uh, um. Uh, so this is all going to happen in the store. So in the store, plus behind the building, we have a, a pop-up tent, and then we have part of the hockey school's uh, building for the day too. Oh, you got it. Oh yeah. Oh, fabulous! Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I thought, I thought they went they went bankrupt. <laughs> no, he he leaves in November, so we're good this year. Next oh, year, I'm, next year I'm scared to death, but we're good this year. Okay. How is good. it two days? So is it Saturday, Saturday and Sunday? So how it's going to be is it's it's ten to five on the Saturday. We, the doors open at nine, so some of the manufacturers will be setting up before. I will be probably on site between. I'll probably just sleep there the whole night. Um, because I'll be because uh, last time last time I was there till eleven the Friday I got there at seven the following morning, because the night before I showed Sarah my speeder and she's like, "Oh my God, you didn't!" Yeah, I bought a speeder. She's like, "Oh, recently." I'm like, "Oh, about two years ago." She's like, oh. "It took you two years to show your wife your speeder." <laughs> well, I had in the back forty in a tobacco barn, you know. <laughs> 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 you know me, Lyd. I always put it in a pack barn somewhere. Uh, we're not maybe, going you know what? Explain, you know what, Mike? Without explaining what a pack barn is, we're you know what, Mike? Maybe you should just don't bother coming across the lake. Maybe just stay in Erie. I think you're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be safer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'll be there, and so start. So we're going to have ten to five on on the Friday. Do I have Saturday, to, I mean. Do I have to have a table? Can I just hang out? What I was trying to say, Lionel, was if we're showing off, you know, cheese balls or or joiner or some sort of like fun stuff, bring it. And if we're showing off any future AML Canada swag, we'll have it on the table as, as a reference if we have it ready. 
Do I have to have a table? <laughs> Lionel, you can have whatever you want, and if you want just <laughs> nothing, I will give you what you want. I want to sleep in, and that doesn't... Uh, to get into Tilsonburg at 9 a.m. is like I'd have to like get out of bed. Lionel, and... Lionel you yeah. can show up when you show up, and All when right. you need something... I'm at your beck and call. How's that sound? All right, let's do that. I have dietary. Like I have dietary needs. That's fine. <laughs> I, I understand. To... I understand that you gotta get up at 9 a.m. and take your back pills. It's okay. Uh we're no, good, my good. dietary needs. Uh, when we were in Rochelle, we uh, had this waitress and there was the pub there, this bar that, uh, this hole in the wall bar that we go to, and uh, it's kind of strange that I have a a special restaurant in Rochelle, Illinois. <laughs> but anyways, it's a really cool little pub bar place, hole in the wall. And we had the same waitress and she was running around looking after us, but she makes, you know, like uh, all kind of fancy chocolate covered strawberries and blueberries and all kinds of chips. But she had chocolate covered bacon. Ooh. And what I discovered about chocolate covered bacon is when you think you've had too much you need to have <laughs> you need to have some more <laughs> <laughs> all right we gotta, up aisle three yeah we gotta stop now because uh i gotta go back i gotta go uh do something for rapido trains you fast track to model railroading fun if it's m if it's h o the fast track is rapido and uh, so uh, this is on the free channel. So if you would uh, like to write in and make a comment about this particular show, you can write to a modeler's life. No, no, that's, that's wrong. It's modeler's life at gmail.com. That's modelers with one L like uh, railroad, not two L's like Helen, as in Bernard Helen. And oh, okay. uh, I'm, I'm, my name is Bernard. I'm, I, and I'm Canadian and I like trains. That is correct. <laughs> and if you didn't catch that address, you can go to our website, amodelerslife.com, amodelerslife.com, and click on, uh, scroll down a little bit and click on the picture of the moderately agitated male boy in a particularly agitated state. And boom, it'll automatically work. And uh, have, uh, Mike, have you ever wanted a T-shirt with a hot dog on it? I do now. If you go to Midwest Model Railroad, and their URL is Midwest Model rr.com and you scroll across the navigation bar to other and uh, the drop down menu you'll see an aml shop and you go in there and boom you're in a wonderland of hats hoodies mugs t-shirts whatever you could possibly need and in there you'll find a t-shirt with a hot dog on it awesome awesome yeah. and if you like this podcast and you've enjoyed it and i can't possibly imagine why you would have uh this is on the free channel, but if you'd like to have twice as much podcasting every week you know, for just a few cents a day, you can go to our Patreon channel, which is, uh, there's a link there on our website, amodelerslife.com, and click on that link, and boom, you can just, you can have twice as much podcasting week. And that, uh, I would say that channel is more earthy, more, it's a little more free-flowing yeah, think of it as uh, think of it as kind of just free flowing. It's uh, I think it's an acquired like, taste. It's an acquired, like a yeah. Of if you like, kind of thing. yeah, it's a stream, yeah. And the point is, if you're a really big fan of the AML, you're really going to love the Patreon channel because it's it's uh, yeah, it's a the hangout, the hangout. The yeah, hangout. it's a, it's a departure from what you're used to. Oh, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Mike, you've had a light load tonight, so we're going to put the, we're going to put the stress on you now. Are you ready? I'm ready. So remember, remember, Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten Canadians who like trains.
Mr. Strang's wardrobe provided by The Dashing Camper. For all your fashion and tent repair needs, trust The Dashing Camper. It's another Lincoln Homer. <laughs> that was perfect. I got to go to the washroom and I'll be right back. Beauty, eh? All right. Kick Beauty, saving eh? Kick saving <laughs>